In this lesson, we are going to add color to this logo and so that we can change the color and add a little variation here as well. You can see that all of this isn't just purple and all of this isn't just teal. There's very subtle changes uh, from each square. There's kind of random colors uh, shift happening there. And then we have this trigger of the teal pop on with these that follows the spheres around which also then triggers the dynamics which we'll get into a little bit later so for this lesson we're going to cover the color so let's jump back into maya and let's have our main mash waiter selected remember these two are the trails and just as a little quick aside maya and the namespace for mash can sometimes get a little messed up so before i started this whole project I had made a mash network and then I had undone it or deleted it. I can't remember which, but somewhere in, inside of Maya, it, it still kept that namespace. And then I optimized the scene at some point, so then it deleted it. So when I added that uh, second trails network, I actually named it the first, you know, mash with no number. So I wouldn't encourage you to rename mash because it can break connections uh, in, between the network. So even though this isn't ideal, you just have to keep track of, you know, obviously this, and you, you can turn these on and off the whole mash network. So you can kind of identify really quickly which one it is, but just be aware it doesn't handle name changes that well and or deleting networks that you don't use this button. Um, if you try to undo creating a mash network or delete it manually, Maya is not happy. So just be aware of that. So to add color, we need to go to the mash waiter and go to the add color tab here and if you don't see this or it's grayed out that's because you're in the wrong version uh, of geometry colors are only available to the uh, mesh type of mash network so to switch it you would have to go to switch mash geometry type but if you've made it this far in the lesson you definitely have it as geometry so it wouldn't you, you should be able to see this but just in case you try to recreate this with instances it's not going to work so we got color, but it's pretty easy. Just add color and we got it. So we're gonna make it a little more complicated because we want to reveal a color with the spheres. So we have purple is the base color. And then we have the teal get revealed by the spheres. <clears throat> so let's add that. So first let's get the purple color here. So I'm gonna, jump over to Photoshop just so I can color pick this. And I'm gonna actually, this isn't the same purple I choose in the in this example. I chose, I think a darker purple maybe. Anyway, I like to color pick this in Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, you can use Krita, which is a free software. And what I'm looking for are these RGB values right here. And that's what we're gonna put inside of Maya. So whenever I'm doing this, um, you, you have to switch the color space over in Maya. So let me show you that real quick. So change color, you just click on the actual color box here and we get HSV, that's not what we want. We want RGB. So we just go to this drop down menu, we get RGB and we want the zero to 255 because that's what at least my Photoshop is giving me the values as. So we have 146 and as I start entering this in, it won't be right and I'm gonna show you the not right way and then how to fix it real quick. 146, 113. <clears throat> 246. So that purple does not look like this purple. Look how much darker that one is compared to this one. You can kind of compare them now one to one. The reason for that is we did not switch over to uh, display space. Because we we're looking at this on a monitor, we're pulling these from uh, uh, sRGB 8-bit and rendering is gonna be in 16 to 32 bit. So it's just a color thing uh, where if you're bringing in colors from Maya and trying to copy, you need to change this over to display space. So now you can see it actually changed the numbers even though you know we had them incorrectly. We had them in we had typed them in the proper way. <laughs> when I say in correctly, it sounds like I'm saying that as one word. I'm saying it as two words. We typed it in correctly. Anyway, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so 146, 114. So I just changed that over and then 246. 
So I'm just toggling it back and forth so I can see the actual number. So now we have it in correctly. We <laughs> did it again, God. We have it, I don't know, we have it, we did it correctly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm starting to lose my mind here. Um, so, and I, I just always want to be careful how I'm speaking because some people aren't native English speakers who are watching this and they might misunderstand what I'm saying. There's so much to consider when you're teaching stuff. It gets exhausting, but okay, let's keep moving forward. Um, so we have our purple color, which is kind of going to be the base color. Now let's grab the teal color and we can add another color layer on top of that. So let's add the top color. Let's just go back to the mash waiter, add another color node. And let's do the same thing we, we're just doing in Photoshop. So we've color picked this, 95, 226. And now we know the trick. We can just go ahead and change this over to display space. And 95, 226. And what was the other one? 194. Cool. So now we have that and we just need to reveal it based on the position of the sphere. Let me just turn that trail back on. That was kind of annoying. Um, so we want the, the color to change based on the position of these spheres. So what that tells us already, if we kind of start to connect the dots of how mesh works, we need a fall off node, right? Remember all the fall off nodes we've been using um, the mash helper, there's all kinds of ways to manipulate this. So we know there's a way to do it. Let's figure this out. So let's jump into color and we want the, the one that's going to come on second to be at on top, right? We want that one to be on top. So let's scroll down here to fall off object and just right click and say, create. And now I have a fall off object. That is this, you know, by de whoops, by default, it gives us this sphere as a fall off object, which we could attach somehow to the geometry and use it that way. But what I wanna do is use the sphere itself because we already have it. You know, it's already there, it's already animated correctly. I don't wanna go through all these other steps to like attach this fall off thing somehow. So what we can do is go to shape and choose mesh and go down to connections, middle mouse drag the C sphere to shape in and it works. How cool is that? So now you can see we have this uh, piece of geometry driving the color change, which is really cool. So how do we get the bottom one down here as well? Let's go back to the color node. Let's add another fall off object and let's do the same thing for that one. We'll just jump into it, choose, oh, we were on the wrong one. Let's go back to that, choose the right one. Nope. So now we're in mash to color two. So we know it's the right one because it's named uh, color two is how we know which fall off object we're looking at. You can see color one, color two, and we want color two and we can tell this is the one to use because it's still on sphere. Let's just choose mesh and choose the D sphere this time. It'll mouse dragging it, dropping it right there. And boom, now we have this color shift, which is really cool. So you're probably already asking yourself, how do we control this distance though? It's just kind of at this set distance away from the sphere. We can do that in the additional settings by choosing a custom shape radius. Check this out, which is pretty cool. So we can adjust this to kind of be the width of the letters themselves because we want it to cover the whole thing. So let's just choose something like 1.5 and I'll go back to the other fall off object and do, what did we just say, 5? 0.5? 1.5? <laughs> um, so now that color kind of, what I'm looking at is I wanted to cover the whole distance of the width of that, or the, I guess the height of these letters as it goes around. And if we look at our reference here, we can see that it's, it's remaining, that color change is remaining on. So how do we get that to remain on? Well, there's another setting in here that we can go to mode and say add to the fall off object. So let's go back to the other one and make it as a mode add. And as we play this, again, this is gonna be, uh, as it's added, it's kind of a simulated thing. So you want it to play it from the beginning. <clears throat> if you try to scrub it, it might not work as well. Let's see, yeah, as you scrub it, it doesn't work because again, Keep in mind, anything that's kind of simulated or time-based, 
you can't scrub the timeline. It's not you won't be able to see the changes. So just be aware that you have to actually play it back and let it run through to see these changes happen. So that's pretty cool. We have a color change. We we've chose two different colors. We have control over what they are. We can control how they reveal each other, and we can also adjust. If you notice on this example, all of these colors fade on, and if you watch where they just started, look like look at the top part here. You can see where this one starts. Watch it at the end. It actually starts to turn back to purple here. And whether, uh, you know, you might want to have that happen, I, I, I don't know, but I can show you how to do it. So what you actually do is use this add mode fade value. So it's actually gonna fade out the adding that it was doing over a certain amount of time based on that number. So let's play it back and you can see it, the purple coming back. <clears throat> so that's up to you creatively if you want to do that or not. Um, I might just turn that off and, and for this version, I might just leave it all as teal uh, color. The other thing that we can do to break up the kind of solid colorness of this and how it looks all perfect is to go in Let's actually do this one first. We're gonna add a random hue. We're gonna add a random saturation. We can add all this kind of random randomness to this color. So as I introduce it, you can see it gets pretty crazy. And you can animate this as well if you wanted. You could, you know, right click, say set key, and then move forward in time and animate it as it's changing color. Maybe as it's going from purple to teal, you could also start to animate this. There's just so many options, so many things you could do with this. It's kind of you know endless what options you have available to you. What I'm going to do is just introduce a little bit of randomness because I don't want to I don't want it to look super perfect. Anytime you're doing CG work, one thing that kind of makes it look a little more believable is anytime there's a little bit of variation. So I like to try to introduce that even in very subtle ways. Let's go back to when it's purple and do that. Let's say like 0 0.05. Yeah, it's way too much. Scale it back to point, yeah, something in there. Just want a little variation so it's not super normal. So the other thing that we need to do is animate the custom shape that we have for the falloff object. So let's go back to the top one that has both of our falloff objects. Just start with the first one. And so what we have is this custom shape radius, and that's what we know we eventually want it to be as, but we don't want it to start that way. So let's animate that attribute over time So with the size of that sphere. So I'm gonna hit a key here, and then I'm gonna move forward. I'm just gonna select this. Yeah, unfortunately, again, this is another node. You can't see these keys in the timeline, so we'll have to open up the graph editor. If you wanna visualize this, Now I have the graph editor open and we have the custom shape radius here. It might be calling it something different. Sure, yeah, search radius. <laughs> of course, it, it, Maya doesn't want to make it that easy for you so that it's named the same thing. This says custom shape radius and this says search radius. Even though they're the same thing, you can see a change here if I move it in the graph editor. So anyway, it's another little fun, quirky thing about Maya. So what I'm looking at right now is where the sphere scales on, I want the, this color change to match that. So I'm gonna set another key here. And then I'm just gonna select the first one and turn that to zero. Let's scrub back. And we may need to, no, it looks good. What I was gonna say was we may need to say, exclude interior, um, just in case it has a whole, if you have like a little, one cube even though it's set to zero it might be because it's thinking that's inside the uh, object so it's going to include it so you can just click this to exclude the interior just for to be safe um cool so we have that one so now we just need to go back to this one i'm gonna k left click in the graph editor to get back to the right time. And then, let's see if we can go back now. I gotta go through the mesh waiter, it's the quickest. So click on the second one, 
and then we can set a key here and just go back in time until the sphere is kind of zeroed out there and just drag that to zero, set a key. For some reason, I don't know why that's not going all the way to zero when I type it in there, but if I grab it in the graph editor, it will let me go to zero. I can just kind of force that to happen. I'm gonna say exclude interior as well, just to be safe. And yeah, now it's animating on and let's hit play. So now we have this color change. We've chosen two colors, we've had variation in them. We've added the add mode. And if you want to, you can you know animate the fade of that so it fades off. There's so much control in this one lesson over color. It's you know super, super helpful to have this amount of control and have it be able to change it on the fly so quickly. So the other thing we could do, you know, if this is kind of annoying you, this little piece here, you could animate the custom shape radius even more so it's smaller at the beginning and so it doesn't overlap so much with this letter. If you really, really, really wanted to have it not overlap at all, you would have to separate these Q, these uh, letters out and do them separately, um, which I do not recommend. So I would just much rather go uh, over animating this. I would do that over, you know, starting over and separating the letters out. The other trick you could do if you know compositing well is you could just do a separate render pass of purple by itself without this top color on. So you could just turn that off, do a render pass of just this, and then you could do a roto shape around that and mask it out um, on top of this render. So yeah, there's there's all kinds of options to do. I just kind of want to discuss because a lot of times in tutorials, people just you know paint by numbers, click this button, click that button, but they don't really give you much more information to go on if you want to do uh, kind of a different variation of what they're teaching. Anyway, so that is how you add color to your MASH network and your logo. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson where we will add dynamics. Thanks for watching.